All right, here in this video, we're going to be working on continuing with the T tunic. The first thing to know is that you do not want to stitch these two edges together because if you don't hem your ends first, you're going to end up with a, a tube. And if you have a tube like this, it's going to be a lot more difficult to you can kind of see here to actually hem the ends up. So the first thing we would want to do here is we want to hem the sleeves and the bottom. Now I'm just going to show you how to hem one sleeve because once you've seen that you can do the other two ends pretty easily. You're going to want a seated position legs together you're going to want to have your fabric facing inside out so this is the side that would be touching our skin directly this is the side that everyone would see we're gonna pull it up like this this is the inside this is the top side so I'm going to fold it over once, crease it out, and then you're going to fold it a second time. Now, what will make this easier is if you have an iron, you can put some more permanent creases in here. If you don't have an iron, you can get a potato and cut the top off and then just run it down and then do your folds and with something like a hot spoon um, heated up on the stove although you want to you don't want it to be too hot you you want it to be just hot enough that you know it would give you a burn if left on your skin but you don't want the spoon to get all black and uh, and glowing red or anything like that. You know, just heat it up. Potatoes have a lot of starch in them, so when that juice gets in there and then you come in with heat drying it out, it's going to hold its shape. So that's the first way you can fold it. But going back to the step just before we made our fold, there's another way you can do it. You can put trim on it. Now, if you decide to go with trim, you should consider a couple of things. One, it should be somewhat elastic. A suede, a velvet, or a silk, those will make good trim. Two, your trim should be lighter ounce than the ounce of your fabric because you're going to be going through a little bit more material. So how do we do this hem with a piece of trim? Well, presuming you have a nice straight clean edge on your trim, you would fold it over once, like before. However, you would not fold this piece over a second time. Instead, you would take your trim and you would bring it up. And what can help here is having some pins to hold things in place because this can be rather difficult to get folded correctly otherwise it would take a section like that that you fold it over and you would come through trying to get some of your uh, material but not going all the way through to the bottom come through like that once we had this whole run pinned we can come over the top of it and see that's not going anywhere that's gonna stay just like that we can pull it fairly taut like that and then we can pick up our bottom edge like that Okay, and what you would want to do is you'd want to mark this right here or 
even just you can pinch it because this would be the line that you want to cut on. So if I take this and I pull my pin out, we know about how wide we want this strip to be and that's about two inches. You're going to want nice straight edges on your trim. In order to achieve that with fabric, something like a silk or a velvet, you might just cut it with scissors and use um, a ruler pressed down against a flat edge to keep your cut straight. You'd be hanging over something like that. With suede, however, it's a little more elastic and a cut can easily get away from you with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a flat hard surface. We're going to use some blue tape. And I did mention that it would be good to pick up a swivel knife in a previous video. These are cheaper. People are more likely to have an X-Acto knife. And a swivel knife, a swivel knife takes a little practice. So we're going to be going with an X-Acto knife for this instead. Now I'm going to make sure that my fuzzier side is turned down. That the smooth side is turned up like this. I'm going to take my tape. I'm going to pull out a length. I'm going to come in just barely in from the edge. Just enough so that any unevenness in the edge is covered and so that it can secure it well. I'm going to go ahead and tear that. I'm going to do the same on this edge, but before I press down onto this, I'm going to get the edge. I'm going to make sure it's really on there. I'm going to pull top and then press down. I'm going to pull right along the edge of the tape. I'm going to go firmly. I'm not going to press super hard, but firmly. I'm going to go nice and slow. Very slow. You do not want to do this quickly. When we get to the end, we're going to wiggle. Press down like that. We're not going to rip it through the end like that same to the other side but as we do it we're gonna keep our thumb depressed along the area we're cutting because we release the tension by cutting this side so this is a little short I'm gonna move that up bring this edge to meet that edge continue down a little bit and that's a nice straight cut piece pick up the tape pull away that part and move the whole piece up try not to move your wrist when you do this make your motion come from your arm and elbow but try to keep your wrist in the same position just like with good penmanship there we have our trim for one of the sleeves and on top of that we have a little bit of lace this as well we can trim up to make it nicer lace another thing you can do here is you can wet this and you can twizzle it like that rock it and heat it in overheat like on a stove or a flame don't let the flame touch it you know you want to hold it pretty high up and then that will secure it. It'll stay like that. Now with consideration towards thread and stitching, first thing is because we're going through a lot of material, I'm going to be using a longer batter needle with a very long wide eye on it. And while it does have a sharp tip, that tip is 
somewhat rounded and that's because it lets you kind of wiggle it free. When we think about thread and what kind of thread do we want to be using, the general rule is the heavier ounce your fabric is, the thicker thread you want. Now if we take a look at these ends here, these are pretty thick. These are at least as thick as this wax coated linen thread. So something like this, which is very thin, very light thread, generally won't do. However, if you only have this as an option, you can put it through the eye of the needle like that so that every stitch is technically two runs of thread. And you can get away with it, but if you can all help it, I would suggest trying your best to match the thread width that you're using to the thread width of the fabric, or thread weight rather. And one nice thing about wax coated linen thread is that it's nice and stiff and so it goes through the eye of the needle really well and then when once it's through there you can actually take it like this pull it very taut and twizzle your needle don't twizzle the string in fact don't let the length of the string twist in your hand just twizzle the needle that. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to take my pen. There we go. You're going to want to be careful that you don't get any little crease overs like that. Now you can pin the whole thing up like this and just remove your pins as you go. Or if you only have a limited number of pins, you can kind of leapfrog your pins. You can walk them down. I'm actually going to do it sort of halfway in between. I'm going to use three pins. And that way you can see what doing a long stretch of it looks like, but you can also see what walking it is going to look like. When you're pinning an um, edge like this, what you want to try to do is have the pins a pin length apart. You don't want them interwoven right next to each other. Now, if you are having trouble twizzling it and having it stick, um, not all wax covered threads do stick well, uh, well enough to work with. You can go ahead and do this where you just loop it around. You wanna go around oh, about four or five times. You wanna come through a loop you make at the end all the way down to here and you want to pass through this loop and you pull it like this. Do not cut this excess length of thread if you do it this way. And this this creates uh, the more times you wind it around before you stick it through your end loop and through the start loop and pull it taut, the longer this knot will be. So this makes a really long, thin knot. A uh, very similar knot is used on swivels when fishing. So I'm going to start this out by going through my top layer of fabric right near the edge. I'm going to draw my thread all the way to about leaving, let's say, two inches on the end. Something you can do here to help secure it is you can pull it around your needle like this. Your uh, pin, I mean, just like that. It's right where you came through. On this side, you're actually going to go back through, right next to it. 
and then you're going to go through the, the meat of your fabric here. You might have to wash it a bit. You want to pierce both things there. You want to pierce all of that. Pull your needle through. You are going to leave a little bit of an unhemmed tail on the end, because remember, you're going to be adjoining these with, with the seam here. So I'm going to come under this here. I'm going to make sure that it's about a fourth an inch apart. I'm going to come through just the fabric. And I'm going to go back through the fabric right next to it. Just say two threads, two or three threads over from it. And I'm going to come through. You can feel where you need to come through at because you've created this little ridge. I'm going to come through here. I'm going to pull that, like that. And you can see what's happening here is this is becoming cinched on this side too, just as a matter of course. I'm going to go right down between our two little holes there. And that is our next cinch. So I want to give you a much closer look at what is going on here. So this is the back side. Here's the front. This is also a good time to mention some things. Firstly, you don't want to remove a pin that you're working past until you've gotten all the way to where the next pin first goes through. Because if you pull this pin out prematurely, what's going to happen is you're going to let all of this go that's in front of it. Now secondly, your needle, these, these type of needles aren't very sharp to begin with, but they, it will dull out. So you are going to want to sharpen it occasionally. You can do that. In this case, I'm using a small sharpening stone. You can use high grit sandpaper, unglazed ceramic like the rim on the bottom of a coffee cup. And I just flip it over. And do the other side. You want to come at a really shallow angle. I also realized that it's kind of hard to see the stitch I was doing from the angle and the distance of the camera. So I want to give a better idea with this stitch before I pull this pin out. So I'm going to turn this over here. What I'm doing is I'm going over from this little strip of thread about a fourth of an inch and I'm pressing that through missing this altogether. I don't want it to go through any of that just yet. And then I'm putting the needle pretty close next to where I went through before. And I'm putting it back through. And again, I want to miss that. Then what I'm doing is I'm going over this little excess. I'm going through all of the material. So 
So once you get it through there, pull it all the way through. And you see that little piece of thread go right between where you went over with it this way and then you tighten that down this will be a little bit loose until you make your next one but now that we've come along this far we can remove this needle and of course after having removed the pin we're going to make a new place for it to go further down.